Hi, welcome or welcome back to Optimize You. This is the second video to a three-part series where I interview James Young Husband, Ina Palacios, Remedy Rule, and Luke Gebby about their take on nutrition. You can check the link in the description box for the first video, which also details the elements of this three-part series. You might want to watch that first if you haven't already. James Young Husband recently retired from his time as a professional footballer in the Philippines. Growing up in the UK, he started his career in Chelsea's youth football program before heading to the Philippines with his brother to play for clubs such as Loyola Sparks and Sarah's Negro FC. Ina Palacios has been playing football since primary school and although started out as a field player, is currently the goalkeeper and captain of the Philippine women's national football team, the Malditas. Both James and Ina have competed for the Philippines in the SEA Games, the AFF, and the AFC tournaments. Remedy Rule and Luke Gebby are both swimmers for the Philippines and were qualified for the 2020 Olympic Games. Remedy was an NCAA Division I swimmer who grew up in the US. For the Philippines, she's competed in multiple SEA Games and the World Aquatic Championships, holding 12 national records and 5 SEA Games medals. She's also a vegetarian. Luke. Although competing in the World Aquatic Championships and the SEA Games recently and meddling, he took a four-year break from swimming during university in Melbourne and had a really unique path getting to where he is now. I, I don't want to have too heavy, so I avoid having like loads of stuff that's fried. Um, but if I have the time, maybe it's scrambled eggs on toast with a little bit of ketchup, with the porridge, the oatmeals the fruit and but yeah I like my scrambled eggs on toast just that simple that is. but sometimes I mix it up a bit I think you gotta change up because if not you're gonna get sick of just seeing the same thing over and over again it becomes a bit boring so I may throw in there like some sh like added sugar with it's just right it's not too heavy but it's not it's just right like yeah. not too light but just a bit over light so yeah uh, cocoa pops or like Fro uh, frosties because I mean, they, they give you a bit of an energy boost and your body just changes up a bit so I think it's you have this you have to mix it up you can't always have exactly the same if not I think you'll lose your mind in a way so just uh, have a have a, I think it's best to have just just a little something but uh, keep changing it up is important as well if not it's it becomes quite boring and yeah a bit sickening I have my naps <laughs> Oh. So, yeah, um, my naps, I really time it where I make sure that I get at least an hour and a half of sleep before games. I really need to know the schedule on game day, especially um, for the national team, it's easy, you know, because they kind of lay it out for you. And then you find, you just find the time where you can nap. On that note, after the nap I've had, I want to make sure I eat heavy breakfast, not so much on, this is talking about later games, right? Yeah. So I make sure I have heavy breakfast, not so much on the lunch, um, then I'll have little snacks. And then on the way to the game, until warm up, I always have just my music on. Sometimes I take it out when there's good music in the locker room, but the music not so much. If it's just me or the team, as long as there's music, I'm good. But yeah, it's really the naps and my, I think my like sports bra, I do believe in that stuff. So my sports bras, because they're your, your span, your cycling shorts, you change it whatever color you're wearing that day. So I gave up on that one. At least a sports bra I have to keep. It used to be chocolate. Like I did always get like, well, I love my chocolate. Um, but not, and then like, but now I've changed up a bit. I have like, uh, we have fruit with like Nutella or fruit with peanut butter. Just say, oh, and like nuts and just the light healthy, the healthy ones. I'm sure if you can go on social media, you'll see they'll give those recommendations of healthy snacks like fruits uh, taken over. And, yeah, because you get the sugar from that as well. It's good sugar as well. And there's water as well with the fruits. But yeah, when I was young, it'd be ch I'd now and then have the chocolate just to change it up a bit. But I've increased the amount I eat as well. and. Yeah, it's, and it would always be my biscuits as well, like coming from England, I'd like my tea and biscuits as well, so what else then? Yeah, if I go to the cinema, I'd be like, I always want to get the, the big popcorn as well. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I, I, I just have those times just to treat myself, but I cut down the amount of times I have those those treats. But yeah, I'd recommend uh, having like fruits with a little bit of sugar with uh, peanut butter and 
like sliced apples with peanut butter or uh, carrots with uh, hummus. When I'm in tournaments, I would say some digestive crackers. It's easy to eat, there's fiber in it, so it's good for your digestions and all that. Sometimes I bring popcorn. <laughs> you know that smart food popcorn? I bring that in my bag. Just like quick sugar rush. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what you eat right before training. Yeah, the, those oat cookies. Just those things. Digestives I must have, for sure. I mean, as far as sleep goes, I like wearing earplugs and a face mask. Or just make sure it's very dark. Um, but that's just in general um, to help with sleep because that's great, one of the greatest forms of recovery. Um, so I would like to keep that consistent when I'm at a competition. And then as far as other things go for routine, I mean, if I am nervous or need to calm my mind down, you know, meditation that is aimed towards sleep is really good. Or maybe even doing like a short yoga, like 15 minutes, like wind down to like, I guess it helps relax the body, which so in turn helps relax my mind. But both of those things I would say I do fairly regularly and not just with competition. Cause I think that's something that could give you I guess some calmness is to keep your routine pretty similar. Like when you go to a competition, it's not like you magically need to start like eating way differently or like sleeping way differently. Or I feel like the warm up I described, we do that type of warm up for our practices as well. So I think good to have a consistent routine. And the only other routine I feel like I would say I have is, um, well, I guess this is different. Like I like wearing compression gear at swim meets. And then oatmeal <laughs> it's like <laughs> best breakfast highly recommend but i also eat oatmeal like non-competition that's my go-to breakfast for sure um oatmeal peanut butter and some type of fruit bananas or blueberries it's like what i go to right now <laughs> yeah it's very underrated i would say because <laughs> i feel like it makes you feel very full and i feel like it has like all things you want in a breakfast, you know, a little bit of protein, some carbs, peanut butter, healthy fats, so <laughs> good stuff. As far as like specifics go, I mean for like a prelim session, I would say like three-ish hours before I would swim, maybe two to three hours, like I would want to eat like a pretty big breakfast, you know, oatmeal, woo. <laughs> and then as far as the meat goes, I would typically warm up and then yeah, I would probably have a shoot a fast carb like a quick breakdown carb that would be typically fruit so maybe like a banana or packet of applesauce so that more quick energy if I have multiple events I might have like a bar in between and then after I'm done racing I would have like a recovery drink for me I don't like chocolate milk, but that one is a great recovery drink. But I'll typically have either cherry juice that has protein added to it or like a vanilla milk sort of <laughs> recovery because for recovery, like, you know, they recommend it have protein and then like a little bit of sugar. So it goes through your body quicker. And then I, yeah, I would try to drink that either while I'm warming down just to like refuel my muscles as quickly as possible. And that goes with like training as well. Like after practice, you know, your muscles are like a sponge. That's what our nutritionist says. And you want them, you want to refuel them so they can like rebuild a better. So that's like some more specifics. And then I guess after the session, I would have like a pretty big meal uh, to recover and then get ready for like the next session. Yeah, I've definitely, notice it a lot more as I've gotten older like like I don't want to have, have a giant meal right before practice because um, yeah I feel like I won't feel digested or so I feel like as far as bigger meals go yeah I feel like at least a couple of hours before you work out or compete but maybe like a little snack before practice like a banana or like some pretzels or things. I'm just trying to think of what I like eat now right before practice. <laughs> but, or like, I feel like fruit is always like a good snack um, before practice, just a little bit of quick. James, Ina, and Remedy all have their own personalized routines and rituals to suit their needs. They know exactly what foods work best for them and will only experiment with new routines during training. 
They're also aware of not eating too close to your event, and it's important to acknowledge too how rest plays such a huge role in the psychological aspect of performance, like how Ina always needs to take a nap before big games. Talking about bigger tournaments like the Olympics, this is what Luke has to say about game day prep. This competition, you would want to be, uh, for example, if it was like world champs or the Olympics, like my routine for sleep and my routine for food starts, I'd say about 10 weeks before. That's when I would have to start to get my body in. I mean, that's an extreme case, you know, that's a once in a lifetime competition. So you'd probably want to, might as well start 10 weeks before sleeping at the same time, sleeping, you know, seven to eight hours a night, eating really well, getting a consistent loop so that, so you want your body to be in a, cons you know, constant state. You want it to be like, this is regular. This is my routine. You can't go to a competition and just be like, oh, I've got a competition this weekend. I better start sleeping early. You know, I'll sleep early the night before or two nights before, or three nights before. I'll start sleeping early. It doesn't work like that. Because in two, you know, those two days, your body's in shock because oh, I'm used to sleeping at 1 a.m. Now I'm sleeping at 8. I don't know how I'm going to react to doing this. And then you get to the weekend and your body's just not right. Five, you know, maybe five days before. Yeah. Um, and food, food, five days, sleeping in food, fix that up. There's no carb loading or anything like that. I just follow my routine and... Um, kind of eat a little bit less just because usually you're kind of resting so you don't need the food so my food is very much if I'm having a hard week my food will be a lot if I'm having a soft week it won't be much and I think one key thing that people do is like they feel like they need to have like a giant bowl of pasta the night before and then in the morning they need to have all these special foods and I think one thing that I've learned is that that is not necessarily the case I think I would your body wants to have what it's used to and what it's good at digesting and what it's you know used to having so for me i have the same breakfast every morning after training right and i yeah. i mean i haven't tried it but i believe if i change that breakfast before a swim meet you know because like oh this one apparently has more energy i should eat pasta then my body's gonna be like what the hell am i putting in you know this is not what i'm used to yeah. i don't know how to properly digest this as quick as i can like it'll probably throw you off a bit this was like a giant bowl of pasta the night before. Unless you're routinely eating pasta yeah. at night before big events, then it's, you know, so definitely that that part. And I think you need to be smart about what you're eating. You need to be, you know, most of my diet is vegetarian. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, that's just the whole nutrition side. I mean, we, we hit our protein needs quite easily. But, but yeah, definitely the, Finding a routine that your body can get used to is mm -hmm. great. I mean, everyone knows, like, when you go on holiday and you suddenly change it up, you know, you feel kind of strange the first few days. You would never want that if you're competing. So any sport, just want the same routine. Really true, like, like it's, I mean, carbo loading, I think they disproved. You can, you can read up more on that, but I think it's, that's one of those old, old things. But definitely, like, so for me tomorrow, I have, this morning I had swim and then I, two hours of swimming and two hours of gym. So my breakfast was oats as I always have oats in the morning. And my lunch is going to be something more protein based because I had done so much, but I don't have training this afternoon. So I don't need the carbs. Right. So it's going to be more protein based to recover because it's based on what I did. And tonight it will be a lot of carbs or like a, one bowl of pasta because tomorrow I have swimming in the morning and swimming in the afternoon with some stuff during the day. So tomorrow is definitely a big day mm -hmm. and I need to properly, properly fuel for that. So that's why that's kind of how you need to think about your, your meal plan. You know, I don't have anything else tonight. If I eat carbs for lunch, it's pointless. All that energy will just go away, you know, but whereas tonight I will need it for tomorrow. That doesn't usually convert well. You'd probably want to eat something before your training in the morning, but that's how you need to think about it. It's not a, I'm competing um, in three days. I need to start eating pasta, breakfast, lunch, dinner. You know, I need a carbo load right now. It doesn't really, it doesn't really work like that because you're just kind of wasting it all. Um, mm -hmm. Night before, yeah, sure, definitely. Heaps of vegetables, heaps of carbs. Fine. You don't want to blow yourself though, but this is just what I do, and and I would definitely do more research I 
I think that's the best thing about the internet now that you can find people in authority, people that really know what they're doing or interviews with, with really good athletes, things like that. But definitely the, the aim is to be able to do your own research and find something you're comfortable with. I think even for me and my team, my nutritionist is different from someone else in my team and we do things a little bit differently. But you just got to have to, you have to find what's good for you, you have to look it up and, and stick to something. You know, don't change it up. Are you also thinking about like the source and thinking about the digestion time for all of those? Um, yeah, if you get like really into it, um, you can definitely think about that. And that's probably what I was doing, you know, before a really big competition, you know, the digestion time. I know I swim with a very high profile swimmer and he, I know for like the Olympics, his diet was so planned out so perfectly that he knew the exact time that he would need to use the toilet. You know, that's how planned it was. Based on the foods he was eating, he knew exactly when he was gonna go and he needed to go, you know, an hour before his race or an hour before warm up is the best time for him. And and his diet was changed so that that was, that was it. Um, but all that stuff kind of comes with research too. At the moment, I'm not really focusing on that because we're in a, just such a big training phase right now. I've been lucky enough to train through the lockdown but you can you can definitely get into that but i would focus on just fixing your food up first and and the obvious don't eat i don't eat three hours before training i feel like three is probably a bit much but i just feel a little bit bloated and uncomfortable if i eat any closer than that a big tip would be like after training have um i well what well, I don't know if this is completely true. It's just what my kind of what my nutritionist told me. Um, she was just like, have at least for me, it was like 20 grams of protein after. So I have that in the form of a shake because that's just a convenience thing because you need to eat within 40 minutes of your training. You need to refuel or else it's essentially pointless, right? Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. If you're not refueling right after, it's pointless. Um, and then I would have at least, I think the number is you like quarter your weight or, or something. You take 25% of your weight, um, or half your weight and you eat that in carbohydrates. So for me, my usual after training thing, like after training this morning, I had one protein shake and one banana. Like that's it, you know? Yeah. Um, because that's the exact amount that I need to refuel. That's like the minimum, the bare minimum that my body needs until I can go and eat an actual breakfast. But there's like oh. the harms of not eating anything or, or, or anything like that within those 40 minutes post-training is terrible. It might be a placebo, but I mean, you're just hungry after training. It's like you've been there since five o'clock in the morning and then it's suddenly, um, you know, yeah. 8.30 or, or, or something. So you're definitely hungry, but it's more... Um, I think when I don't have it, I feel more sore, I feel more groggy, I feel, just don't feel as good. So I think it's, that's the biggest, one of the biggest things, um, besides the eating, eating well, is, is knowing when to eat and post-training, you definitely need that. You need that at a, at a, at a minimum, of some 20 grams of protein in the form of, and this is if you can't eat within 40 minutes. Some people are lucky and they live like two minutes away from the pool and they can just go home and have dinner, but I don't. So I, you know, it takes me some time to get home and I need to make sure that in those 40 minutes that my body has the minimum it needs to, to recover or else all the, yeah. you know, cause all sport is, is breaking down your body. So it's built up stronger. And if you don't give it what it needs to build up stronger, then you're just wasting. Then it's almost doing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. so the gains we'll get from it is so minimal yeah yeah so like usually we're all in the shower and we're all drinking you know a lot of people just have chocolate milk chocolate milk is really good for that too mm -hmm. um, most of the people in my squad just have chocolate milk but everyone in the shower will just be eating and drinking something you know a muesli bar a granola bar something like that mm -hmm. is really important don't don't overdo it just get, get what you need in but okay super important
Obviously, we're not all Olympic swimmers, but before we go into tournaments, it's so important to have a plan to make sure our body doesn't go into some sort of shock. Don't carbo load or do something different or special. Figure out what's right for you. The key word is routine.